Hey everyone, so in this tutorial I wanted to share um, a solution to something that is commonly asked when I talk about tabbed interactions. You can also apply this concept to any type of click and reveal or anything that you want to really dictate um, the uh, the way that the learner interacts with um, a slide. So in this instance, we have four tabs. If I wanted to um, dictate that the learner goes through the tabs sequentially, so tab one down through tab four, um, I'm gonna show you how to prevent them from jumping around. <clears throat> so the first thing that we're going to do is add some states to our, <clears throat> to our buttons here. So I'm clicking tab one and going into states. We have a normal state. I want to edit states and I want to create a selected state. I want a visited state and I want a disabled state. Now my disabled state, I want to be gray. All right, so we've got that. My visited state, we'll just make it any other color. So make it green. My selected state, my selected state, I'm just going to have a glow around it. And then we're good to go. So I've got all my states, so I'm clicking done. And then what I'm gonna do is double click my format painter with my tab one still selected and then select all of my other buttons. And then exit out of my format painter. And so the other thing that I like to do when I'm working with tabbed interactions is create a button set because that is going to um, prevent the, um, if you have audio on your different uh, tabs, you won't have any overlapping audio or need to create extra triggers or anything like that. So basically a button set um, makes your selectable objects selectable only one at a time kind of like a radio button so i'm selecting all of my tabs right clicking choosing button set and then button set one you can create a new set if you'd like but i'm just going to choose button set one cool so then the other thing that we need to do uh, with our states uh, sorry is uh go through and for tab one i'm not going to do anything i want that I want the initial state for tab one to be normal, but the initial state for tabs two, three, and four, I'm going to change to disabled. All right. And that means that they will not be active when the timeline starts. They will only become active when we tell them to become active. So once we have that, we're going to go into tab one, the layer, and create a trigger. And it's going to say um, change state. And this, we're going to change the state of tab two, my next tab, uh, to normal when the timeline starts. Or sorry, when the timeline ends, rather. Uh, do, do, do. Okay. So you can have you can have it uh, change when say the media completes, uh, for example, or whenever you would like the next tab to become active. So I'm going to copy that trigger and I'm going to click on tab two's layer, paste that trigger, and then change uh, set state to tab three. And then I'm going to do the same on tab three. Tab four becomes active. Okay. And then we don't have to do anything with tab four. So when we preview this now, what should happen is that we can select tab one, everything else is inactive. Um, as the timeline, so the five seconds ends of uh, tab one's layer, tab two will become active, so on and so forth with tab three and tab four. And then uh, once they're all active, the user can jump around and click any of the previously visited ones, um, though because we have that button set, they'll only be able to select one at a time. So let's preview this. All right, so here we can see we've got tab one active, so I'm going to click that. And then after five seconds, tab two will become active. Here we go. And this is going to happen for all of our tabs. 
have three and tab four. And now that they're all active, the user can jump around to previously visited ones.